Hello and welcome to ABA Made Easy. I'm Mauricio and today we'll be covering the final part of the exam. F. Professional Conduct and Scope of Practice. You've made it to the final video. And guess what? I have a reinforcer saved for the end of this video that I think you'd appreciate. But if you're finding these useful at all, hit like down below, subscribe if you haven't done so already, and let other people know that are studying for the RBT exam about these videos if you found them useful. It might help them too. But let's get into it. So my notes are up there this time. So if I look up there, don't think I'm just gazing uh, into space. I pay attention, I make eye contact, okay? F1, describe the BACB's RBT supervision requirements and the role of RBTs in the service delivery system. All right, so what do you need to know about your hours and supervision? That you are in charge of keeping track of these hours and you're the one in charge of making sure you get supervised in a timely manner. So what does that mean? It means you have to track the hours you work and track the hours you get supervised and if you need to get supervised it's your responsibility to make sure your supervisor does supervise you now if it's a good supervisor they'll just automatically come to your sessions when they should but you know everyone's human so your responsibility is to keep track and if you need supervision you gotta let them know so five percent of the hours of therapy that you provide per month have to be supervised that means that let's say you do 100 hours this month, five hours of those 100 have to be supervised. So during supervision, what happens is that the BCBA or BCABA is writing down what you're accomplishing during that session and they give you feedback at the end on what things you can improve a little bit. And then they give you a form that they sign stating that they supervise you. Now you have to keep this form, okay? And I recommend having a digital copy of this form. So take a picture, scan it, scan it with an app, put it on the cloud, just back it up somehow. And you have to keep these for seven years. Remember that, seven years. Might be on the test. So is this important to keep it for seven years? Seems like overkill, right? Well, what happens sometimes is that the BACB can audit you to make sure that you've worked the right amount of hours and that you've gotten the right amount of supervision. And I know this because I got audited and it's very real and you only have a week to show them all your paperwork and all your supervision. So save the stress, keep it in a folder on your computer and on the cloud somewhere just to have it handy in case you need it. You never know. Happened to me. One week to get all the paperwork. So glad I had it in a folder. If I didn't, I'd be scrambling and stressed out. Don't let that happen to you. Just keep it for seven years in a safe space. But what's your actual responsibility as an RBT? Like, what's your job? What do you, what do, you do? Okay. Well, as an RBT, you're the one that's doing the most one-on-one -on -one with the learner. You're the one running the session. You're not the one making the behavior plans, you're the one implementing the behavior plans. Of course, if you have some kind of suggestion or idea, it's good to bring it up to your supervisor, but making the plan itself is a supervisor's job and running the session is your job. Since you develop so much rapport with the family and the learner, it's your responsibility to let your supervisor know if something has changed in the home, as we spoke about earlier. One thing we didn't talk about is that as a registered behavior technician or any type of behavioral therapist for that matter, you are a mandated reporter. What does that mean? That means if you see or suspect any kind of abuse or neglect, you're legally required to report it, okay? And you can start off by telling your supervisor if you suspect that there's some kind of abuse or neglect going on. And that is a common theme with this exam when you don't know something or it's something that you know might have legal implications the first step is always let your supervisor know okay that'll be the answer hint so hopefully it doesn't happen to you but if it does like i said first step is telling your supervisor 
then you take the next steps to report it according to what your state law requires. F2. Respond appropriately to feedback and maintain or improve performance accordingly. We spoke about this. Basically, if your supervisor is giving you feedback, it means they care. It means they want you to be a better behavior analyst and they want the client to succeed. So don't get offended if someone's giving you some feedback or constructive criticism. Just learn from it and become a better behavior analyst. We could all improve and try to implement the tips. Easy section. Next. F3. Communicate with stakeholders as authorized. No, this doesn't mean telling someone at Texas de Brazil what kind of meat you like when they come around with a steak. Those are not the stakeholders that we're talking about here. Stakeholder is basically anyone who interacts regularly with your learner. So that could be the learner itself, the family, the caregivers, or professionals like teachers or other therapists. When they mention communicating as authorized, that simply means you're not to go beyond your role as an RBT. This is because, as we spoke about earlier, the success of the therapy and the planning and everything that can go positive or negatively is ultimately the responsibility of your supervisor and everything falls on their shoulders. So you can answer questions about the sessions you're running and how you're running the session, you can answer that. But you can't make recommendations or change the plan in any way. For example, if a parent comes to you and asks, why aren't you giving my child attention when they're throwing a tantrum? You're allowed to tell them that you're using differential reinforcement and explain to them the procedure, and that's because it's in your scope. You're an RBT, so you're explaining what you're doing in the session. You're explaining how you're implementing the plan. But, for example, if you're at a school with teachers at an IEP meeting where they're trying to tailor the school schedule or the work schedule uh, to the child, it would be inappropriate to make recommendations. What should you do if they ask you a question outside of your role? That's right, redirect it to your supervisor. So just remember, if you don't know something, go to the supervisor. F4, maintain professional boundaries. So when you're working with a learner, it is paramount to keep a professional relationship. What you want to avoid is dual relationships. So you're there to be a therapist. You're not there to be a friend, to start some kind of romantic relationship with the family, or to conduct business with the client or whatever. That's not your role. Your role is therapist, and you're not supposed to have a dual relationship. Now, that doesn't mean don't be friendly. You should be friendly. <laughs> but it does mean that you should keep the conversations about the learner and the sessions and try to keep it at that. Also, you're not allowed to accept any gifts as that could cause a conflict of interest. And I know we live in the 21st century, but don't add uh, your client or anyone associated with your client on social media while you're working with them. That's inappropriate. These might sound like rigid rules, but they keep the integrity of the therapy intact and that's what you need to do. Still not convinced? Let me give you an example. Let's say you're giving therapy to a child and you and the parent get along pretty good, right? So you decide, hey, wanna hang out this weekend? And you do, and it goes great. Awesome, but guess what happens? Then you start getting texts like, hey, I can't make it this day. Can we push the therapy half an hour later? And then there's some kind of schedule changes. And you feel kind of awkward since you're like friends with them to say no. So now it just causes this weirdness where you have to change your schedule. And let's say for some reason there's some kind of conflict when you guys went out. You don't want the kids therapy to be put in jeopardy because you had some kind of weird conflict with the parent. So just avoid it altogether. Don't hang out with the parents. Just be friendly, stay professional, and keep the conversations to the child and the therapy. 
the best thing an agency can do is before therapy even starts uh, to make sure to make it clear to the parents that there's no dual relationships uh, they can't add you on social media and they shouldn't give you any gifts and once they know that should be much easier you avoid the situation altogether F5 maintain client dignity no one controls the cards they are dealt it's all a genetic lottery I am so glad that this is the last section in this exam because this is so important always respect your client and treat them with dignity we're all human treat them as if they were you how would you like to be treated this includes protecting their privacy not talking about them outside of work especially don't talk negatively about them outside of work but you shouldn't talk about them at all outside of work because you know HIPAA kind of illegal these are all amazing individuals with different strengths and deficits and it's a privilege that families trust us with the progress in someone that they love take a second right now and think of the person you love the most okay now imagine trusting the success of that person with a complete stranger that's hard be the person you wish your loved one had. And never forget why you got into the field in the first place. All right, you did it. You completed all the sections in this RBT clutch exam review. How do you feel right now? One to 10. What, 11? Is that what you said? Guess what, it's about to get better because I have the ultimate reinforcer for you boom what that's not a cute picture of an animal no it's not it's even better I made a study guide okay basically pointing out all the important things that I pointed out during this video so you could just read through and review but repetition is key so you can watch the series again. The link to the playlist is down there. And if you want to watch it faster, if you're getting down on time, you know, YouTube has this little gear icon where you can change the speed of how fast you watch the videos. And I talk pretty slow just to make sure you understand what I'm saying. So if you speed it up, it's still comprehensible. If you're more of a reading type, you got the study guide. How do you download the study guide? Just click the link down below. There's a link to the doc. And surprise, a bunch of cute things everywhere. All right, good luck on your exam. You're gonna do great. You're gonna be an amazing RBT and I am so excited for you. Hell yeah. Make sure you sleep the night before and you eat a good breakfast. Oh, and more importantly, make sure you subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already and hit the like button. Helps me a lot in the YouTube algorithm. All right, it's been nice. Who knows what kind of videos I'm gonna make next. I have a few ideas. Might take a little bit, so be patient with me. Um, but they're coming. All right, I will see you on the other side. Suspicions are true